So some of you may have heard last week that Arizona is the first state where Zillow is going to be offering 1% down payment loans for potential purchasers. Now Zillow is covering the other 2% of the down payment. So essentially the down payment is going to be 3%, but buyers only have to bring 1% to the table. So for those of you thinking that a 20% down payment is the only way to buy a home, there are actually quite a few loan programs that allow for smaller down payments, but 1% is really unheard of. So this 1% loan program tells me that Zillow's not only bullish about real estate appreciation in the nation, but especially bullish about Arizona. When someone is paying only 1% down, they don't have a lot of skin in the game or rather equity in the property. So if a buyer should default on the loan, Zillow is left holding most of the home's potential value by a way of a bad loan. So Zillow's not dumb. They're not going to do this going into it thinking they're going to lose money. So if this could be a potential new strategy for Zillow to acquire properties, should they default? Do you remember last year they tried the whole fix and flip model, but they really got caught in the, in the change in um, our, our, what do I want to say, the amount of homes available for sale and rising interest rates and all of that environment that we had in the latter half of 22. So that program went away. Now, if they start to acquire homes through defaulting mortgages, that might be another potential strategy for them. But I get, you know, I would hope that they're not going to into this thinking that people are going to default. There has to be more to it. So um, let's consider home appraisals. Now, you know, when you get a bank loan, you usually always have to get an appraisal. Well, when you're putting 20% down on a home, there tends to be a little bit more sway in the appraisal. And this is another thing. I want you to think of home appraisals not necessarily as the true value of a home, but the amount of risk a bank is willing to take. So with 1% down, the bank is taking quite a bit of risk, or Zillow in this is taking quite a bit of risk. So I think they are really counting on future price appreciation to help cover that gap. The other thing to think about is if they are actually going to be the holders of these loans, um, there's quite a bit of interest in each payment right now. So maybe they're going to use that interest to kind of pay the principal on their side. So what it's worth it to them for what they're earning in interest to go ahead and take this risk on the 1%. Also, um, you know, there are not a lot of nuts and bolts about the program yet. More stuff is getting rolled out and we'll be sure to share it should we hear, but some questions to really ask if you're considering a program like this, because I know Zillow, if they're gonna give that 2% and allow only 1% down, there has to be some sort of get. So, um, you know, how much of the loan are they willing to write? Like how, you know, at what price point are they going to have a cap for a program like this? They might only do certain values. You know, when they were doing the home purchase program, they had a buy box. They would only buy in certain neighborhoods with homes of certain ages and roofs of certain ages and all that. Are they going to have that potential buy box for these loans? It'll be interesting to learn. And then what is the true interest rate? Because they are taking a lot of risk. Are you going to pay for that by having a higher interest rate potentially? Um, and on the 2% that Zillow is bringing to the table, they're not just writing off that 2%. Is it being added to the loan amount and financed over 30 years? Are they potentially putting a lien on the property for that amount of that 2% or maybe that 2% has to be paid off first before any of the principal gets touched? Just lots of really semantics to consider in these loans. Um, is there a prepayment penalty? You know, if you want to go ahead and refi out of that in a few months, is that okay? You know, a lot of banks think you hold a property for at least six months, um, but maybe they have a potential uh, longer prepayment penalty. Are they locking you into a refi should rates drop so they can hold loans well into the future? That's something to think about. You know, um, lots of times we'll see People, you know, date the rate, marry the house, but date the rate, you know, that's kind of a risk. We just don't always, you know, know where rates are going. But um, the people have this in mind that this potential refi. So maybe they're going to be underwriting loans 
um, well into the future should they lock you into a potential refi. Also, what are the origination fees to get a loan like this? Are the closing costs going to be you know, or unordinarily high? So just while this program sounds great when we say 1%, it's important to really understand what the true costs are of a program like this.